So, if you're up for it, I can lighten the mood um, with something called Don't Marry Poets. Um, not that I'm an example or anything, I've only been married three times. Um, <laughs> all right. Don't marry poets. We're a dreadful lot. We will amaze you at our first few dates with our command of words. That's all we've got. Find webs of language for potential mates. We poets learn to study what we say. When writing, we must constantly revise. Our words are lovers we will throw away when sweeter, more seductive ones arise. So when you say we're lying, we protest. We craft our stories with artistic flair. Prosaic truth is hackneyed, dull at best. Elaborate excuses show we care. But when you anger us, we won't admit that we're upset. We'll get our journals out, explaining that we need to write a bit. Back in our paper lairs, we're free to spout that you don't love us, don't appreciate the reams of poetry that we've produced. Our pages never doubt that we're as great as Shakespeare and misunderstood as Proust. When we return to you, we will be tired and we'll assure you everything's okay. We don't need you, for we have just conspired with ones more skilled at giving us our way. Hold on. All right, back. Our pages aren't concerned if we forget to mow the lawn or spend too much on books. They understand that artists cannot fret about some bills or how the garden looks. When you're fed up and put us on the couch, we'll snuggle with our rough drafts and confess. We're not sure that we love this sullen grouch who never sleeps with us, who won't caress us like the lovers in our fantasies. The pages curl, brush up against our hands, ask us to tell them more, so quick to please without annoying us with dull demands. What you'll discover is you can't compete with lovers who will listen to our rot when you have finished feeding our conceit. Don't marry poets. We're a dreadful lot. Thank you.